Hi everyone and welcome to this new video. In this video I want to talk about something that is going on within the European Union. This has to do with data access, with cryptography and with the European Union wanting to weaken cryptography and to access more metadata, communication metadata, in order to fight crime for law enforcement reasons. So this is like a really complex topic. However, what is interesting is the story that brought us here. So where does this story start? Well, basically, a few years ago, in 2023, this high-level group was set up in order to study access method to retain data for effective law enforcement. So this story starts in 2023 when the ADELE group, which stands for Access to Data for Effective Law Enforcement, was formed together and basically it is co-chaired by the Commission and the Rotating Presidency of the Council of the EU. And basically their objective was to explore how to deal with the challenges that law enforcement practitioners face in their daily work in connection to access to data and potential solution to overcome those challenges. Now, what are we talking about here? We are talking about cryptography, that is law enforcement, and this also includes uh, the secret services of the various countries, they want to get the data. Data to fight crimes, to fight terrorism and stuff like that, right? So they want the data. And the problem is that cryptography does not allow them to access this data. Now, there are different forms of cryptography and the most powerful one is end-to-end -end cryptography. Now, in this form of cryptography, even the service provider does not have full access to the data that is being communicated. The service provider has only access to a limited set of metadata necessary for the communication. So basically, the only devices that can actually access the data are the endpoints, right? So endpoint one and endpoint two. And in the middle, we have the server, which just acts as a relay and the server requires just some metadata to function. And this metadata, of course, is not stored, it is saved, it's not saved on the disk, it is not stored, and it is only needed for the actual communication itself. And this is not, uh, is not appreciated by law enforcement, by secret agency and other organizations, because it means that they have less access to data. So this group was created in order to establish they call it collaborative and inclusive platform, but to be honest, it doesn't really seem like that and we will get that in a bit. But basically, they want to understand how to face, how to deal with these challenges. Now, the problem of this case is that uh, cryptography is strong. And when we use strong cryptography, like the data is protected by the algorithm. So unless you find a way to break the algorithm, something that if found would be published in scientific research and it would bring to further improvements in cryptography, so to better ways to protect our communications. So unless you like break it mathematically, there is no way that you can actually access it, right? Most of the time. So what they want to do basically is they want to weaken cryptography to make it weaker than it really is in order to access the data. Now, what did uh, this group come up with? So we have this high level group. So what did they come up with? Well. They come up with 42 key points and basically they've created a list of recommendations and a concluding report. And all of this information, by the way, will be available in the description. So here we find the list of the recommendation of the high level group on access data for effective law enforcement. This is a 25 page, pages document with a list of possible recommendations. And then we find the concluding report, which they produce, uh, I think, on November. So on the 15th of November, so this date, which means last year, they have this, the opinions expressed are those of the high level group only and should not be considered as representative of the European Commission or the Council official position. So basically they have this, uh, you know, group to, to our, what are the issues, possible solutions and stuff like that. So that's the basic idea. Now, basically the group wants to establish the concept of security by design. But this thing, to be honest, is that technology should be developed according to the wishes of police forces and intelligence and designed to be interceptable from the outset. And by the way, I took this from this Patrick Bayer post, this one. So I'm gonna put this link in the description. So if you want to inform yourself, just go and read. So this concept of security by design, to be honest, is sort of like they are trying to make it look less scary than it really is. Like 
Security by design does not mean that technology should have backdoors, because what we're talking about here is literally backdoors. Making technology weaker as it is, than it is, than it really should be, just so that law enforcement, police agencies, and things like that, uh, secret services, can have an easier time to access this data. Now, most of the time, when governments come up with this kind of uh, solutions, they always uh, use the same argument, and it is uh, to ensure the safety of all members, of all citizens, in this case of the European Union, but it can also work for a specific country, like America did that multiple times, so they always say, to ensure the safety of all, we need to have access to the communication. Now, the problem with this approach is that it is not really a wise approach. And it is not really wise because it does not consider what can happen in case of corruption, for example. Now, in case of corruption, if you have an extreme powerful entity that can access the data of anyone at wish, in case of corruption, people within that organization could use this power in malicious ways, in ways that actually break the law, against targets that actually did nothing wrong. And uh, I live in Italy, and in Italy we have proof that this actually happened, that corruption happened, and that technology, which was supposed to help uh, police agencies to you know, deal with, uh, with targets and things of the sort, was misused. It was used for the personal gains of few individuals. So, the corruption of individuals is never taken into consideration in these cases, and to build entire technological infrastructures and devices based on weaknesses, based on backdoors, is just not stable. So, this thing is one of the critical issues that I always find is corruption. The second thing is that if you add a backdoor for your government, the same backdoor can be leaked outside and be used by other people, by malicious people. So, once you have the backdoor, you have the backdoor. And uh, to ensure that only you can use the backdoor is really a hard problem. And it can leak, like any sort of authentication information can leak, other people can use it. So it is always a double edged sword. And to me, democracy is all about the balancing of power. It is about having powers that balance each other, and there are barriers between one power and the other. So to focus on law enforcement, on secret agencies, all this power seems not wise to me. I understand why they want to do it, because they want more power, they want to access all the data so that they can, they can have an easier time doing their job. This is understandable, but it threatens the privacy and the health of all citizens. And most people here, I would say, the, the common folk, uh, we can say, in these cases, the common folk would say, maybe I have nothing to hide, so what's the problem if government has an easier access to data? And of course, they miss the whole point that protection of privacy is for everyone, and it is especially for the people who work in dangerous field, such as investigative journalism. If there is a journalist that has a corruption case on some very powerful people in the government, in a police force, in a secret service, and things of the sort, it's going to be extremely hard for him to actually survive if there are such backdoors, if there is such technology. We cannot rely, we cannot be sure, we cannot be safe using technology that by design is backdoor by our government. So it is really, really malicious. And so their focus is with access to device, with the retention of the metadata. So they want service providers to store the metadata for much longer than they actually do and to give it to, of course, law enforcement, police, secret services, and things of the sort. And they also want to encrypt data in transit, in real time, something extremely dangerous. So this is what they want. They want to attack the cryptography, they want to threaten the privacy of the citizen. At this point, a really interesting question is to ask yourself, okay, who is within this group, within this commission? And basically, the members of these commissions are being hidden, because once again, we have a report. Here we have Patrick Breyer ask for a list of these people, and he got a redacted list. We can only see the country, basically. We cannot see the names. And this is suspicious. Why all this secrecy? If you want to threaten the privacy of all the citizens in the European Union, I would do it in a much more transparent way. I think it is fair to ask for more transparency. And he writes, 
he writes, all that is known is that police forces and secret services are represented. So clearly there is representation for these, uh, for these forces. Where is the representation for the citizen who want privacy for everyone? Are their voices being heard? So despite the highly sensitive topics in terms of data protection and fundamental rights, the EU data protection supervisor only has the status of an observer. NGOs are not allowed to take part in the group meetings. It simply does not look right and I think it's something to really be analyzed. Now at this point he said, okay, this group in 2023 started to do this kind of jobs. They came out with this report and now the European Union is assessing their work. So in order to analyze the report of the Adele group, a call for evidence was opened by the European Union. And this call for evidence is open for feedback by everyone. The feedback period will end in a little bit uh, in the 18th of June, so this month. It means that we have like one, two weeks to give our final feedback. And basically here, I'm going to put this link in the description for all of you who are within the European Union and, in, uh, and are interested, of course, in protecting your privacy and the privacy of your fellow citizens. So basically, this is the website you can see. So the feedback period is from May to June. And basically, from this portal here, you can, uh, you can give your feedback. Give feedback as a citizen of the European Union. So basically, for now, that's the only thing we can really do. So we can give our feedback. Now, will this change anything? I have my doubts, to be honest. I've grown to be a bit disappointed, actually more than a bit disappointed with the European Union and especially in how they handle bureaucracy. Because the truth is that bureaucracy is a means to make something more complex than it really needs to be. And in this creating complexity, they can hide their true intentions and they can get away with a lot of stuff. Because such topics are extremely complex and your average folk doesn't really know how to think in these terms. Like you tell them, you tell the average person that they are, we are doing it for the safety of everyone because, you know, to fight better terrorism and things of the sort, and people will believe that. They will not stop and think about the possible consequences, the negative things that weakening encryption and privacy for everyone will do to our, to the European Union itself, therefore to all of us who live in this, um, in this region of the world, basically. Once again, what I always find in this discussion is that the threat modeling, which is a key important thing to do when you want to do such dangerous things, right? So you need to threat model very well. You need to understand what are the possible threats, what can they do to the system. But the way the threat model is all about external threats. They consider the terrorists, the one who makes the crime and things of the sort. They consider it always outside of the institutions. What about insider threats? How are these systems supposed to help against insider threats? An insider threat that can leak such backdoor system to the enemies, an insider threat that can misuse such backdoor system for their own purposes, for their own like goals. It's extremely, extremely scary. So yes, the only thing you can do is give your feedback. If you're a member, try it, give your feedback, whatever it is that you think. If you want to share what you think in the comments, I would like to uh, like read it to understand what are your thoughts on the matter. My thoughts is that this is a complex issue. It makes sense for law enforcement to want to obtain this data, but we as citizens have to fight back. And we have to fight back because this is a slippery slo slope. We don't want to make our encryption weaker. If anything, we want to make it stronger. We want to give the means for people to protect themselves. Information nowadays can really mean life or death for certain profession, especially like journalism, and we should protect these people. Yes, this comes at a cost of also, of also making the crime, the terrorists and things of the sort much stronger, but it is a cost we have to pay in other way. It is a cost we have to deal in other ways. We cannot simply make it weaker for everyone because by doing so, I believe, this is my belief, of course, and let me know what you think too, but I believe that if we make it weaker for everyone, we're not going to help anyone. We're actually, like if we make cryptography weaker, if we make our technology weaker, it's going to be a downgrade for everyone and it's going to increase the risk of attacks. And I would not like that. I would like to live in a European Union where the, the actual privacy of citizenship is well defended 
and these ideas are rejected because the basics of information technology and security are understood and there is a better job of threat modeling like a better job of threat modeling which is more explicit more documented and all threats are equally considered not only outsider external threats which are the most obvious one but also the insider threats the one that are less obvious and the one that actually can create a lot of damages so i hope it was interesting i hope you got something out of it i hope you learn about this group and about this assessment if you want to give your feedback i suggest you to do so let me know what you think and to the next video